Howdy, it's Pete Thorne. Welcome to the studio. Hey, you guys, I got to do something so fun and exciting this week, and I'm here to tell you all about it and kind of take you along for a little sort of fly on the wall experience with me. So what am I talking about? Well, two notes. Okay, great company that makes load boxes, speaker simulation, stuff like that for us guitar players. They've got their own proprietary impulse response technology, which is really great. It's called Dyn IR. With Dyn IR, you can use it with the Two Notes hardware products, units like the Torpedo Live, the Torpedo Studio, the Cab M, the Captor X. And you can also use the Dyn IR impulse response technology within Two Notes Wall of Sound plugin. So let's say you're recording in Logic or Pro Tools and you want to take like a line out out of a preamp or a guitar amplifier with no speaker cabinet sound and you want to do the speaker simulation within your computer. You can totally do that. So you can use, in other words, Dyn IRs with the Two Notes hardware or you can use it actually standalone, just as software. Now with Dyn IRs, it's not a static IR kind of technology. You can actually grab the microphone within the software and move it around anywhere on the front of a speaker, backwards and forwards or close to the cone, out towards the edge. There's almost an infinite variety of different microphone positions and different tones you can get. You can combine a couple different microphones, maybe even three or four microphones. You can even put microphones on the back of speaker cabinets. And with the Two Notes software, you can even add reverb, compression, EQ. So it's just really, really cool. Now lately, they've been doing artist Dyn IR packages. My friend George Lynch did one, my buddy Phil Lex did one as well. And the idea with the artist packages is have the artist put together a few different speaker cabinets that are maybe like really special to them. Unique cabinets, maybe ones they used on, you know, famous recordings or that have like, you know, cool history behind them, like great vintage speakers in them that are really broken in, that kind of thing. So they approached me and asked me if I wanted to make one of these. And as of yet, I still haven't put out any kind of impulse response or speaker simulator package of my cabinets. So I jumped at the chance. I said, yes, they also at the same time approached my buddy Dave Friedman. So we put our heads together and we thought, where would we want to go to do this in LA? Because we got to pick a recording studio where we can go and essentially kind of sample these cabinets. We thought for five seconds, Sunset Sound. Of course, legendary place where The Doors recorded, uh, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, Barry Manilow, Van Halen. It was a no-brainer. We had to go to Sunset Sound. So before we knew it, we had the legendary Studio One at Sunset Sound booked for two days. Let me take you along for the ride. Getting cabinets together to send off in a truck that just pulled up out front. How many cabinets are you bringing, Dave? Four, right? Yeah. And then I've got four. Those are my four. Those are Dave's four. A little while later, over at Sunset Sound. So we are working in Studio One, legendary room. Uh, there's the console. It's a custom console, been in the room since about 82. It's got custom mic pre's that are sort of API-ish, API 558 EQs, and you can see all the great outboard. I also brought in a couple of my Sur amps, and this is mainly so that we could listen to the cabinets and test out different speakers to see which speakers in each cabinet sounded the best. Question for you. Hmm. What's the coolest record done in this room? The coolest record done in this room, Van Halen 1, <laughs> by far. But you know what's funny? And I think it's this studio, maybe not Studio 3. I think it's this room. In my entranceway uh, at my home, I have a picture of Mick and Keith singing background vocals on Exile on Main Street. And I think it's maybe right here where I'm standing right now. Whoa. Uh, and it's a Jim Marshall uh, photograph that he took. And I've got, a, uh, you know, one of the, the, the prints is signed by Marshall, actually, that... A few months before he passed away, I was able to buy from him, which is really special to me. So I've got this great photo, and I, yeah, I believe it's in this room. I'm gonna double check it tonight, look at the, because it might be Studio Three, but I think it's this room. The the live room in one and three look quite similar. So so going back to Van Halen, tell me where you uh, historically, as far as you know, yeah. where they were set up for some of the tracking of the songs. Like well, where were the drums? Where was the Ed? Where was? We're right here. Uh, as, as as far as I know, okay. So it depends on the song, because mo I think most of Van Halen one was this room, and some was done in two, in Studio Two. Uh, but but from what I've seen, like there's that one photo that's been circulating that supposedly Don Landy took that uh, where the drums are here, and then you get the bass cab over here, and then you got one of Eddie's four twelves right about where one of these cabs is maybe a little bit further. Oh, and the baffles around it, right? With the baffles around it, and then the photo was taken from that room looking in this way. 
and you can see Ed standing here like this with the destroyer, and you see the cabinet. With the two mics, one on the top set and one on the bottom set. Exactly, yeah. But, but, but uh, I will say that there's certain songs, let's say like the guitar from You Really Got Me, where I've heard the, the soloed out, isolated guitar track, um, and there is almost no bleed. So the song that they were cutting in here the day that that photo was taken from that window in the cab in the room, that was Jamie's crying. And they can tell by, you know, track sheets and by the guitar. guitar he's playing. Yeah. yeah. But um, so, you know, they experimented with different things. So I think probably if, if they cut You Really Got Me uh, in this room, the guitar cabinet was probably isolated. I believe there's photographs of the setup and track sheets and stuff where you can see that on some of the songs, that guitar was isolated in that room. Ah, that makes um, sense. There's also that classic photo of Roth, like singing, where he's like, you know, leaning back in the microphone, and I think it was this room. Um, so, you know, but long story short, I mean, everything from Zeppelin II, Zeppelin IV, XL on Main Street, I mean, so much stuff done in these rooms, it's just crazy. And now you're doing stuff in here. I was trying to think of the last time I was here working, and it was for a Japanese artist that was doing an album of covers. It was a female singer, and we did a verbatim, note-for-note -note version of Sweet Home Alabama in Studio 2. <laughs> nice. And I totally had every note and every lick in that tune, like, dialed. But yeah, I never actually heard the finished mix. I'd love to hear it. So. This process, well, we don't want to give away any of the Tunos proprietary uh, situation, involves putting microphones in certain positions on the cabinet, making sure they're phase aligned, making sure that the gain structure is the same between the mics. It's a lot of running back and forth between the control room and the live room and checking things and then running tones. And it's a crazy, crazy, really long, actually kind of tedious process. <laughs> So the fellows here that are working today are, are uh, you know, working hard and we really appreciate their help uh, because it's, um, it's difficult and time consuming, but the results at the end will be worth it for you out there at home. 57, 421, SM7, 121, 160, AT40, 50, U67. And a 441. So one thing I really just had to check out while we were there working in Studio One was the reverb chamber. This is, of course, a huge component to the Van Halen guitar sound, that amazing reverb. And a lot of people think it was a plate reverb. It wasn't. It was an actual chamber, a room. The room has a big speaker in it, and then it's got microphones. And you simply pump sound into the room via an aux send from the console. Uh, that comes out through the speaker in the room and the microphones pick up the sound. And that's where you get that incredible reverb from. So it was hiding behind uh, this panel in the wall and it's inside this, uh, this crazy old door here. So let's, let's check out the reverb chamber. Ah. Put a little spelunker hat on. No light in there. Whoa. Smells old. Any bodies in there? It's, a, it's Van Halen's sweat in there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, come on, if you're as big of a Van Halen nut as I am, this room is sacred ground. I mean, it's, as far as the gear goes, just as big of a component to the sound as the Frankenstein and Destroyer guitars and the Marshall amp and the uh, the right speakers and all that. And this is probably the most elusive, most difficult thing to get. You'd have to reconstruct, you know, a room like this with the same dimensions and use the same mics and everything. But anyways, there is a great plug-in version uh, from IK Multimedia that recreates this room. Uh, and it's just terrific for, for 99 bucks. But uh, yeah, basically this was just so exciting and such a piece of history and a thrill to get to check out.
Take you on a little tour of the lobby here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the, the classic gold and platinum discs that were all recorded here. Of course, lots of great music by The Doors. Before there ever was a Van Halen, of course, there was a Doors, and they worked at the studio. I believe the studio was made in 1958, and originally it was done for, uh, for Disney to work on Disney projects. This is Van Halen 1, of course, 10 times platinum Van Halen 1 award. Uh, what else we got here? How about some Rolling Stones? Oh, look, some Zeppelin. Zeppelin 2, Zeppelin 4. There's Zeppelin 4 up there. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Oh, I spot a diver down. I spot some Audio Slave, my old buddy Chris Cornell. And what do we got over here? Yeah, Diver Down, Van Halen 2. Platinum Discs, pretty cool. More Stones. Over down the hall here, we got uh, Total Four, of course. Uh, we got some Barry Manilow. What else we got up on this wall? There's some Dan Fogelberg and some Neil Diamond. Just epic. Come on now. Coolness. So after getting everything set up in the studio, the guys started sweeping tones and moving microphones around and doing what they do. I thought, I'm gonna go for a little walk. So I thought I would take you guys on a little East Hollywood tour of uh, kind of my old stomping grounds, really where I, I grew up. There's a lot of wind noise in the camera because I'm just filming this on my iPhone and stuff, but uh, bear with me, hopefully you'll still find it interesting. So I'm walking east on Sunset Boulevard. The legendary Sunset Sound. And this is like my LA ground zero. I mean, I started here going to MI. God, I don't even want to say how long ago it was, but it was a long time ago. And uh, that's just about behind that building, three blocks that way. Um, I used to live in an apartment right off of Sunset. That way, about oh, maybe 10 blocks on Fuller. And walked to school every day. I didn't even have a car here. Um, it was like, I'd get around on the bus where I'd walk. So all these years later, I'm still here. <laughs> standing on the corner of Ivor and Selma. And this is just a few blocks away from Sunset Sound. That's Sunset Sound Factory, their sister property. And interesting tidbit, not a pleasant memory. In about 99 or 2000, I was walking with a friend of mine and we were jumped by some dudes on that corner. And I actually got beat up pretty bad and I had to go to the emergency room. And I've still got a scar uh, kind of in my eyebrow actually <laughs> of my left eye from stitches that I had to get because I got hit pretty bad by a dude with a ring. Anyway, not a great memory, but shit happens. There's Trejo's Tacos right over there. And that dude standing right over there is Danny Trejo. You can see him with the black hat on right there. <laughs> I just walked by him. A little Hollywood star sighting. And if you're out late in Hollywood and you have a little too much to drink and you think I need some food to deal with this, Kitchen 24, right there in Coanga, across the street from Burgundy Room, which is over there. Next door, Hotel Cafe, Mecca for up and coming singer songwriters. I've seen some good gigs in there over the years. Of course, we got the room here on Coanga, uh, as seen in Swingers. When I used to take the bus from Musicians Institute home, it would turn off Hollywood Boulevard here, go straight up Coinga that way, all the way towards Burbank where I lived in the Oakwood. I was there for my first six months in LA. No car, taking the bus pretty much right here, a few blocks away, I'd get on Hollywood Boulevard. There's Whitley. I spent six months living next to that Fontenoy building. building in a two-bedroom apartment with a weirdo roommate. And the more things change, the more things stay the same, really, all around these parts. And you can go in here and get yourself your own Academy Award. Hit the Hollywood stage for your stripper clothes. 
And this is where it all began, Musicians Institute. I clearly remember coming here for the first time. And it still looks pretty much the same, although they've got more property now, more buildings. Okay, walking from MI, Musicians Institute, back over to Sunset Sound. It's just a few blocks away. Those that have been in L.A. know that Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard are just like three blocks apart. And here we go, across the street, uh, by the 7-Eleven on Cherokee, and boom, Sunset Sound. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching my Sunset Sound studio tour. We had a great time working there, and hey, thanks for watching my little tour of the surrounding neighborhood and my walk down memory lane as well in Hollywood. Uh, these Dyne IRs are sounding awesome. I've already played through some of the virtual cabinets, so can't wait for them to come out. We will let you know as soon as it's going to be released. Thanks to Two Notes. Thanks to Sunset Sound.